Hi, it is 7.04, and I am going to call Monday, March 28th, Finance Committee meeting to order. I will take a quick roll call. Uh, Paula. Here. That's it. Did we lose Paula? Okay, Paula. Kevin Snyder. Here. Joe Parker. Here. Kevin Bougain. Here. I just missed somebody. Uh, Bill Rotundi. Here. All right. And Bonnie, Elena, Zach are all, uh, and Steve are absent. So we will soldier on without them. All right, Mike, how all right. are you this evening? Good. How are you all? Fabulous. So hey, before we jump into everything, Yep. Can I tell you that I found a delightful looking Polycom video conference system for the bargain price of $17,000? Oh. <laughs> Just throwing that out there. It would probably alleviate some of our pains from last week. Yeah. Send that on to uh, the cable studio. Yeah, I'm sure they uh, have the funding for that. Yeah, just thought I'd share. Does anybody know what the, sorry, Madam Chair. Go right ahead, Kevin. If I may. Um, I guess the question for Mike, do we know, I guess it gets probably too early for this, but just do we know if there are plans and there's got to be upgraded technology for the, the new town hall whenever that comes along. So, um, yes, the new town hall will have uh, a media room, um, you know, and they'll um, have microphones in the sailing for the meetings and uh, they'll be able to operate right out of that media room. So would the media center be using that? The media center will be, they'll be doing their broadcasting live right from the town hall. There'll be cameras set in place that they can control from the media room and the sound too. That sounds fantastic. That's very exciting. Something forward to. 2025. Right. <laughs> right around the corner. <laughs> All right, Mike. I just right. want to note that um, Zach and Bonnie have joined the party currently in session. So. What do you have for us this fine evening? Well, first up, we have Council on Aging. And um, I know Beth is on tonight also. And uh, best budget you have, well, let me share my screen. I'll put it up. As soon as I find, let me open it first. Give me a second here. I do have it. All right, do you have it? So um, in Beth's budget, uh, as you know, Beth has um, a full-time director, um, a part-time clerical position, and also an outreach council that's funded partly from the budget and uh, partly from the grant that we received from the state. And um, one of the things in Beth's budget, when it comes to the salaries this year, 
on the part-time wages. Um, Beth is looking to add hours to the clerical position. So right now that's an 18 hour a week position and Beth is looking to make that um, 23 hours. The outreach counselor, um, eight hours of um, the outreach counselor's time is covered by a grant and 10 hours is covered by the budget. Um, on the expense side, um, Beth has put in for um, some increases in purchase of services, electricity, uh, propane, natural gas, and repair maintenance of equipment, uh, the major ones. So if you have any questions or if Beth wants to speak, Madam Chair, I have one quick question. Go ahead, um, Paula. Beth, just quick, curious about this fund, the position that's partly funded by the state. Um, yeah. How long do we have that grant for? Is that an every year thing? Do you have to apply yeah. every year? Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah, we get a, a per capita amount awarded to us. You know, every um, resident who's 60 and over, we get so much money um, per senior. And we get that every year. It's about $35,000, I think, is what we're getting this year. Okay. And if the, our, the number of our seniors go up, you could possibly get more money? Is that how that would work? Um, right now that we are using the 2020 budget, um, 2020 census, rather. So next year, um, it may increase, but I'm sure knowing the way budgets work, our, our per capita number will probably go down as the number increases. The census data increases. Okay. But I, I'm not sure of that. That's an unknown at this point. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Madam Chair. Go ahead. Uh, Beth, can you just um, explain um, what the outreach counselor does so people know that weren't on the committee before? Yeah. So as Mike mentioned, we I have two part-time people. Kathy Barnum is our outreach worker. And her main... Um, job is to sort of help people access public benefits. So she helps people with food stamps. She helps people with housing. She um, is a trained Medicare counselor. So she helps people select their Medicare supplemental plans. She helps people locate um, better plans for them during the open enrollment period. She also does home visits and which is, I think, the most important role that she has is she meets the needs of the people who can't walk into the building. So we have a lot of people in town who are homebound um, and she goes to their house and, and offers them at home services to what we do here in the building. So if somebody needs food stamps and they can't come here to apply, um, she, she goes there and does it. Um, and she's amazing. And, and just, I mean, I, I've researched surrounding towns, what they pay their outreach workers, and it ranges from $24 an hour to over 30. Um, so we're, we're really on the low end as far as what we're paying her, considering most of her salary is out of the formula grant. Um, but yeah, that's Kathy, she's awesome. Um, I don't know if you have any more questions on her position, but uh, um, our admin, her title is clerk, and that, that title really bothers me because she's really more of an administrative assistant. Um, but one of the roles that she's really picked up this year has been our grab and go program. Uh, when COVID struck, we never closed our doors here. We were open the whole time to help people in need. And we realized very quickly that one of the needs is seniors were afraid to go to the market. Um, so we offered a grab and go program here. And um, we've realized through COVID that a lot of the people who are coming to get the food, it wasn't really because they were afraid to go to the market, but it was because they were caretakers of somebody at home. Um, a lot of husbands coming to, to get meals for the two of them because they may have had a wife with cancer at home or, or was taking care of somebody at home. So I don't see that program ever going away. And actually I was just out talking with um, 
a couple of the members from the building committee and, and the architects for our new facility, we're going to have a drive-in drive-through window so people can get their meals that way. It's really an awesome program. But Saucy handles that all on her own. Um, Mike and I met before this budget, and we really talked about increasing hours and, and staffing because we're going to need to staff a bigger building. So we're trying to do that incrementally, and that's why I've only requested. Um, the additional five hours for Saucy, the admin. As you can see in my budget, it, my budget is, is basically salaries and then facility, you know, heat and lights. I just want to let you know that if you've never been here or you haven't seen my newsletter, I mean, we are a full service agency. Not only are we doing the human service stuff on this, on one side of the building, but we have um, programs going on all the time. We try to keep a balance of physical fitness programs, social activities, and educational programs. And most of those programs are, we ask a little, a little fee for people to join. Um, and that, it, or that money comes out of my formula grant. So we're not, the town isn't paying for any of the programs or services that we, we offer the people who come through here. So I think you do an amazing job on the shoestring budget that we have. So. Madam Chair. Go ahead, Zach. Uh, that, well, you kind of answered part of my question, uh, Beth. I mean, there's oh. no money in here for any kind of programs or service, I mean, other than labor and, and, and the facilities. So are you relying on donations um, to have, get things done or volunteers? Um, or how's that work? I mean, I mean, just to put this in perspective, we spend Correct me if I'm wrong, what, $30 million on education or $40 million mm -hmm. on education? This is uh, one third of 1% of the school budget, or, or less than that. I don't have a Amen. calculator in front of me that we're investing in our seniors. It seems to me disproportionately by a long shot, uh, you know, uh, wrong. So uh, I think this whole budget needs to be relooked at, in my view. Yeah, I mean, we we are amazing as far as what we do. So we have, I have contractors who come in and provide the fitness programs. We pay for the contractors out of our formula grant. We charge the people who come in $2 per class, which is very reasonable. And then we put the $2, we put the amount of money that we get for the classes into um, our revolving account. And we use that money to pay for our entertainers, our singers, um, our craft supplies all comes out of that revolving account. Um, so again, we do a lot. We also get a lot of um, our educational programs through the community. Um, so we'll have presentations from local banks. We'll have the district attorney's office come in and do a complimentary um, presentation on senior scams. We've had um, different nursing home facilities come in and do presentations or activities um, and they offer that service as part of their outreach to the community. But but you're right, Zach, you are 100% right that we could do so much more with more money, but you know, we've come along, I've been here for eight years and we have grown tremendously. Um, we're very creative. I also write a lot of grants and I can just say in the last two years, even though we were never closed and we were switched immediately to Zoom for some things when we needed to be closed. Um, I was writing grants. We got money to help people with their um, their fuel needs. The Attorney General's office, I wrote a grant for that. I wrote a grant for um, emergency food. So we had a couple of farmers markets and a couple of meals that we put out. Um, I, I just recently got awarded a marketing grant so we can rebrand the center as we look forward to the future. So that's another thing I do. But to be honest with you, I think where we really need to look is, is at staffing, especially as we go forward to looking at our new facility. Um, we're spinning here. We are spinning. Not only are, am I meeting one-on-one -on -one with clients, but I'm, I'm doing the programming and um, we never stop. And yeah, you, uh, you're right. We need to relook at this. But this is what I'm presenting. So I would say thank you, Beth. Thank you. Um, for all of that information. Um, there is no doubt and no question that you guys do a phenomenal job over Thank at you. the COA and that 
um, you, like just about every department in this town, would do a phenomenal job if you had an even larger budget. Um, so I, I think that, you know, Zach, we don't need to be pitting one department against another. We just need to acknowledge that everyone is working hard and doing the best they can with what they have. So with that, um, I am ready to move on unless anyone has other questions. And just as Beth said, she's been here for eight years. So before that, the entire salary section of the budget was zero. So, wow. um, you know, we we were really at a, a dark side when it came to servicing uh, our senior citizens back then. Yeah. And next, uh, thanks Beth. Next we have the veterans uh, budget. <coughs> And uh, Estelle is on, and uh, Estelle has uh, in her office, um, she has, we have the full time agent, and then we have a part time clerical position. And then on the, um, on the <coughs> expense side, um, she, the request this year is the same as last year. And also, obviously, the biggest part of this budget is veterans benefits. Um, and the request is the same as last year. And as we talked, I think previously, um, the vet veterans benefits, uh, chapter 151, um, we received 75% reimbursement for all our expenses on that. And Estelle, I know is on. If uh, you have okay. questions, can uh, we, we can hear you. Can you? Ken, welcome. Thanks for joining us tonight, Estelle. Always my pleasure. Um, as Mike said, the veterans uh, benefits is always the biggest piece of my budget. And um, the upside is always that we get 75% of it back. Um, I was reflecting over the last couple of years and I've often said the 230,000 is like a good figure. Um, the past year, um, yes, we were slight and we were at about 173,000 and just over that, but in 2020, before everything really went crazy, um, our benefits reached up as far as 205,000. Um, so again, I come back with just anticipation of growth. Again, I feel like people are getting more comfortable coming back into the office, making inquiries um, regarding chapter 115. Um, I think just before vacation, like within 10 days, I had five new clients. Um, I never know when to expect them and I don't, Oh, you know, obviously know their needs. Some are more basic than others. Um, but just examples, one new person on my rolls um, has co-pays of $600 just for one prescription. So um, the amount is always, you know, the unknown here. But again, I think the 230,000 just works without having to come back. Um, and ask for money, you know, regularly with any regularity. So um, I think the other big piece this year too was the 5.9% cost of living increase, which we'll start to see. Um, and I have started to see the increase right now for my clients, um, what their benefit dollar amount was. The state does not do their cost of living increase until July. And because of such a large increase um, this year, they have now moved the uh, recertification to um, July. So it will be more in line with their cost of living increase for federal. Um, this year, it put a tremendous hardship on a lot of the clients because it threw everything off. Um, Sorry, my voice is going. With the increase, 
they recognized that quickly in the state um, just this past month turned around and made a one-time adjustment to all of the clients. Um, so they all received a lump sum check of $479, which is 100% on the state. No money had to be um, given from the town, but just to help offset because when social security goes up, my benefits go down. But it doesn't mean that these clients aren't dealing with the uh, rent increases or food cost and so on. So to help offset that, they put out this check, which we just put into the mail um, uh, over a week ago now, which was a big lift for a lot of the clients. But in order to never run into a situation like this, um, the state has now changed the recertification dates to be more in line with um, there with the state and saying it backwards. So when the government does it in January, we usually make the adjustment. The state comes back in July make and kind of corrects it. Now we're going to wait to do all recertifications till July. So they'll kind of wash one another out, if that makes sense. So that's been the most um, the biggest challenge or trying to help people get through that um, crunch. As far as benefits, so. Oh. <clears throat> uh, Madam Chair. Go ahead, Joe. Uh, Estelle, I'm still pretty new to the, the finance committee um, and, and you covered a couple of things that those benefits help out with, but what's sort of the breadth of, of things that those veterans benefits can be used for by the recipients? So chapter 115, um, what I primarily see here in Norton is for those individuals age 65 and older on a fixed income, it helps to bring up their monthly income um, to the 200% poverty level. Okay. Um, it also helps individuals with unemployment. It helps individuals who are transitioning out of the military, who are in between jobs, have run out of benefits um, from unemployment, let's say, um, but they're still, they still don't have employment, full employment, so it could help supplement that. Um, students who are in college, um, it's often hard to find a part-time job maybe for the summer months when they are out of school and not receiving educational benefits from the government. So it will help supplement them until they return back to school in September. Um, emergencies just in general for people who, you know, unemployment. Um, this year, I obviously, and since COVID, have not seen nearly um, the number of clients I've seen in the past who would have lost jobs or, you know, for one reason or other, fired, um, let go. They would come on benefits after their unemployment ran out. But because unemployment was so plentiful and, you know, um, people were making out much better on unemployment and they were continuing the benefits, um, you know, they kept extending it. So it wasn't just 21 weeks. It was, it kept going on. Um, so I didn't see nearly the number of individuals I would have seen um, had that not been the case during COVID. So that's a variety of what we can help with. We can also help with individuals who are applying for social security disability. Um, many people know that that can often take years um, and there are folks that need to live in the meantime. So this can help supplement in that case, or if they were putting in for a service connected claim, disability claim, um, we could help supplement them with the monthly benefit until that came in. Great, thank you. That helps me understand quite, quite a bit better. And sorry to make you do all that talking with your voice going, but I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. It'll come out eventually. Um, but the other piece of, you know, what my department does too, is we, I file federal claims and those claims are for service connected disabilities, but they're also for aid and attendance. And that is a big benefit. And our community, uh, especially with 
um, Great Woods, residents at Great Woods now, previously Wingate and Epic, um, because it helps supplement uh, for those individuals a good chunk of money that allows them to stay in an assisted living facility. Um, so I see a lot of those claims come through and just again in general service connected disabilities um, they involve a lot of time in many cases but they have a great payoff um, for the individual as well as for our community because that gives them that you know the money comes into our community as well for them to spend so I try to look at the different options with those um, resources, but also to use state resources as well to help folks and to minimize Chapter 115 um, because Chapter 115 is used as a last resort. So I have to do the due diligence to make sure there are another, not other benefits out there for them to use, in particular the Mass Health buy in, um, which picks up the cost for many if they qualify um, for their Medicare each month and for prescription if they're 65 and over. Um, one of the big pluses right, for me. Go ahead. Thank you so much for all of that info, Estelle. That was really okay. helpful. Um, does anyone else have other questions for Estelle? Madam Chair. Go ahead, Kevin. Still, for the veterans' benefits, if it's like a 75% reimbursement, what caps the request at 230000 Is that like a cap based on some kind of data point, or is that just an arbitrary number? Um, I It was in existence before I arrived nine years ago, and as time has gone on, I just feel the number has worked. I could probably speak to it now. Um, like I said, yes, one year it was 173,000 and plus that we used, and but yet the year before it was 205. Um, there are some of the other big variables um, with Chapter 115 benefits is that the state also provides burial allowance for indigent um, veterans or widows. Um, I've had years where I've had better than 10 not all took advantage or needed that assistance, but um, it's now at $5,000. So those can quickly add to it as well as just in a medical emergency or dental. And it can throw that um, number, um, it, can, it can raise that number pretty quick. So I'm thinking someone did their homework and it maintained itself and has maintained itself to be um, a good number moving forward, and I keep going back to 230. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Matt, Madam Chair? Go ahead, Kevin. A uh, question, um, Estelle. So if I'm reading this then, so through half a year for fiscal year 2021, there was 77,000 in veterans benefits Correct. expended, right? So is there like some, is there like some seasonality in there or um, does that lumber look low for any particular reason? Um, I felt like it was low. I went back um, this evening and right now we're already up 30,000 more. Um, I feel as though the resources that have gone out in the last couple of years with COVID, we've looked at other resources, i.e. unemployment being as um, more of a benefit. I actually had three clients come off of Chapter 115 because they were able to pick up um, more money on unemployment. Go figure. Um, SNAP, I think just using other resources that were more in the plenty. Um, for a lot of folks in the past, if they were collecting with SNAP, they were only getting $16 a month. That changed to almost 200. Um, different things where I might have supplemented other, um, other benefits to them, they weren't as necessary. 
Um, and I know just in general, uh, my numbers for uh, clients went, you know, I've been as high as 32, um, much higher in the past, but I will take the credit and say that we've just found other good resources for them. But during COVID, um, for folks that have either passed away, went into long-term care, and the numbers just dropped. I think I was at 26, like I said, just not even two weeks ago, well, two weeks ago now. Um, you know, I put five new clients on the rolls. So um, again, right now in today's numbers, based on February, it had gone up another 30,000. I think it was 30,000 or just, just under 30,000. So um, about 100,000 now, so yes, this go right now, I feel like, yes, it's lower than, than it has been. Um, again, it's such an un, I don't have the hard fact to say exactly what's gonna happen tomorrow. Um, and in the past, I think I could have spoken a little bit better to that, but since COVID, um, I, don't, I feel more uncertain with that number, um, but I would hate to, go far from it or move from it at all, just on the chance um, we come back to a, a new normal that clients are seeing the need and um, are feeling more free to come back out and look for assistance. Great, Estelle, thank you very much. That was a great explanation, I appreciate it. <clears throat> Any other questions for Estelle? All right, hearing none, you have one more budget for us. The, uh, yeah. budget. <laughs> the more, I do. The budget. I love this budget because this is like the hot dog party budget. It's fabulous. <laughs> it plus, hot dogs plus. Yeah. So this, this budget covers, and Estelle can correct me when I say something wrong, um, it covers um, flags. For the cemetery and the holders when needed and mm -hmm. also uh expenses for the memorial day parade and the veterans day parade that we may have um and we will have um we had a great veterans day parade and we were really glad to see for the first time and several parades um people you know our community back on the parade route um yes it does help with the hot dogs but there is a big expense um, with flags in town, um, even beyond the cemetery flags. It's more of the flags that you see at the common um, or on Pine Street throughout the cemeteries um, and now the POW MIA flag as well. But we also supply each veteran's grave with a marker flag holder um, that adds certainly to expense. The parades have been modest um, and certainly uh, it was a time to replenish more on the flag end um, to use the budget. But now that the parades are back and, you know, um, I feel like we have grown in our parades. So I hope everyone's coming out to see them. Um, there are other needs with the parade as well, um, whether it's um, right now we're trying to up grade or update, I should say, a lot of um, the harnesses and stuff for our honor guards. Um, we're maybe looking at speakers right now um, to help because we have the um, set of speakers at the Common, but not at Master Sergeant Trent or Pine Street. Um, that's easily accessible. Um, I feel like it's it's been a good um, it's a good dollar amount. Um, also the flags that you see lining um, 123 on the flag poles, um, we maintain those and they will often have to also be um, updated. So we're, it's truly flags and parades and hot dogs. But, oh, but on the chance that we need something serious and our Veterans Council is more robust than ever. We have grown in number and we have not only veterans, but um, I'll call them patriots, um, family members of veterans um, who have been coming up with a lot of great ideas. And I see a lot of events um, in our future that will 
benefit from having access to some funds as well. Excellent. I know that for I think the last two or three years we've participated in the wreaths across America, the holidays, and that has been, I know that my daughter and I place wreaths at least once. It's been really awesome to see that take off in town. And uh, this past year we were grateful again because uh, last year we had to have a private event, a private ceremony I should say, and um, we broke it up into two two weekends. One, we just pre-recorded the ceremony and then the second, um, we placed the flags. This year, um, everyone was back and I'm just glad that we didn't lose the momentum because this was just year three for us. Um, so yes, that is um, another event that happens and um, Pat Tarantino is our chair for that and she does a great job, but our community once again comes together. So it's a big plus. Awesome. Does anyone have questions on the memorial and vet's budget? <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us, Estelle. We really appreciate Hi. your help. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> next is uh, select board budget. Um, so this is for uh, the select board uh, administrative uh, secretary. A um, couple new things in here, um, part-time wages we put in. Um, this is just um, to fill any possible needs. We're gonna have uh, a maternity leave. So uh, there will be um, 12 weeks um, when no one would be in the office. So this would, uh, give us uh, some time for someone to come in uh, during the week and also to, to do the minutes of the meetings, the select board meetings. Um, and an incentive pay here is uh, a stipend for managing the workers comp program. Um, you know, this would, for all general government employees, uh, work with the insurance company, work with our, um, HR consultant to develop uh, internal policies and procedures and develop a uh, handbook for all departments um, to follow when it comes to workers comp. And then on the expense side, um, everything is the same except under telephone communications. Uh, this was a request um, from the board that they would like um, the staff person to have a cell phone so they can be in contact um, whenever the, not, the person's not in the office. Any questions? Madam Chair. Anyone have questions? Madam Chair. Go ahead, Zach. Mike, what exactly, uh, other than minutes, what exactly does this position entail? Sure. What is what it goes on? Yep. So this person um, is the administrative uh, secretary for the select board. Uh, the position handles all licenses and permits that um, come under the purview of the board of selectmen. All uh, common vic class two licenses, you know, all used car licenses, um, uh, licenses to store fuel, alcohol licenses, um, and, uh, you know, all, as you said, all the minutes and um, the workers comp. Thank you. And we've been fortunate um, to have a paralegal and a uh, notary in that position. It's helped. Any other questions on the select board budget? All right, hearing none. Let's move on.
on to the next one. Okay. Uh, next is town manager. Um, so in uh, this budget is uh, the town manager and the assistant to the town manager. Um, and then under the expenses, um, the largest portion of this um, was added last year, um, which has been a big help, uh, contracted services. So this is the money that we're using um, for our HR consultant. Um, it's money that we're using um, like um, for grants when we need assistance. There's a grant we're applying for now for a major culvert replacement that we needed uh, the assistance of uh, an engineer to work with us on developing uh, the grant. And we'll be using some of the money for that. And this also will be used uh, for our salary survey uh, this year. But um, having that money available uh, has been a big help with the grants that we're applying for. All right, does anyone have questions about the select board budget? Or I'm sorry, the town manager budget. Hearing none, we can continue on. All right, the next one's a big one. The next one, the finance committee? It is. <laughs> so 24. 24, no, $2,415, um, same as last year. Um, this covers the minutes, the clerical services, um, advertising, um, printing, and dues and memberships. Uh, that's the MMA. And uh, the budget has stayed the same. Does anyone have questions on the FinCom budget? All right, I think we can move right along. All right. Next is accounting. And I know James is on if you have questions. Um, in the accounting office, you have the full-time accountant, uh, full-time assistant, and a part-time uh, person that works uh, in the department on the payroll. And uh, the annual audit, a uh, slight increase of $1,000 uh, for this coming year. And the expenses have stayed the same. Does anyone have questions on the accounting department's budget? Actually, I'll ask Mike, is there a reason the part time employees wages aren't broken out separately? I'm assuming they're lumped in with the office salaries. Yeah, they are lumped in. Okay. Mr. Town Accountant. Hello. Mr. <laughs> James, did you build your budget wrong? <laughs> well, to be honest with you, when I got the job, like 16 years ago, that's the way it was. There's a couple of uh, departments that have it that way, set, set up that way. I was told at the time that uh, they were hoping to make that part-time position a full-time position, and they wanted to keep it in one line so you could compare one year to the next. Uh, it's never happened. I'll be happy to move it to part-time wages if, if that's preferred, but you know, it's not a lot of money in there anyway. So, uh, Whatever you guys want, I'm fine with it. I can split it up. I certainly don't feel strongly either way. I just like giving you a hard time every now and then because it's, you know, I got to break up these meetings somehow. That's yeah. my job. <laughs> Madam Chair. Go ahead, I'm, Kevin. I'm going to be the annoying one and say, if we're going to break it out for other areas, we should probably just be consistent across all of the different budgets and break it out, even if it is a small amount. But, but I'm not, you know, it's not a hill to die on. It's just for consistency's sake. 
Madam Chair. Go ahead, Joe. I, w I would agree with Kevin. Um, and it's really, for me, just about the consistency across departments. But I, again, not a hill to die on, but I, I would prefer to see them still connect. Right. And I mean, if we were ever to increase that position to full time, we'd be able to see the comparison on the, you know, personnel services subtotal line item anyway. Um, but that's just, I mean, do we know how many departments are combining them like this? I would have it seems to. seems like the majority are broken out. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, James. I think there's either two or three departments. I'd have to go back and, and, and recheck it, but um, but I'll break it out. The control sheets behind it are breaking it out. Right. So, but I'll break it out so that the summary also shows it. Thanks, James. We appreciate it. James, can you go back 20 years and break it out for every year since? I totally can. <laughs> 16 years, but not. To I actually can't go back 16 years. <laughs> that's scary. Blame, blame the guy that sends those sheets to the departments, James. Oh, that's you. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any other questions for James on his budget? All right. Well, thank you for joining us, James. Uh, thank you. It was lovely to see you. Same here. Um, next, next is legal. Um, we're proposing 80,000 again, obviously, um, we don't know where we're going to land. Um, in 2020, it was $65,933 spent last year was 112,000. And, uh, this year to, through December, we're at 36,000. So, um, you know, we're hoping that uh, the 80,000 will be a good number and we won't have to come back for a reserve fund uh, at the end of the year. I think we're all hoping for that, Mike. <laughs> um, does anyone have questions on the legal budget? Uh, Madam Chair. Go ahead, Zach. Mike, can we get a break out of this by departments that are using it? Is there any particular uh, breakout of this at all? Yeah, I know um, it's, it's legal matters that I say obviously you can't go when it's for, but uh, if you know the board of selectmen are using five thousand and the uh, board of health is using five thousand, is that broken out somewhere? Yeah, I think we actually. Uh, well, when I I always say to Jen, uh, when I say we, it really means you. Um, so I would say, I know that Jen worked on that not, not too long ago, so I'll, I'll get you that. Thanks, Mike. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Mike. Any other questions about the legal budget? Hearing none, I think we can continue on. Okay. This is a uh, municipal building. Um, so in this budget, um, some of the things uh, that you might not might not be clear the way they're listed, uh, purchases of services, um, that's for um, cleaning of the town hall and the police station. Um, the other one um, is uh, repair maintenance of equipment. You know, th that would be all the boilers, um, any AC units, um, that need work. Uh, boiler equipment um, it is one of our biggest uh, companies that we use all the time on that. Um, under um, trash removal, that's for the all the trash removal except for the schools. So the animal shelter, the town hall, police, fire, uh, COA, ELP, uh, that all covers that. I don't know if uh, there's anything else that you have, like uh, charges and expenditures. That's what we use um, whenever we need anything. Uh, it covers the water 
water bottles that we have delivered to town, anything we need, uh, like at the hardware store, if we need keys or any items like that, that would come under that. Madam Chair? Go ahead, Joe. Uh, Mike, uh, just a question on the repair and maintenance of the equipment. Um, that's an increase of over 10% there. Is that due, are we expecting expenses to go up on a per hour basis or is that more thinking that because of the age of things that they're more likely to break down? Yeah, it's, it's actually a combination of a few things. One, we've already spent 13,000 through December of this year. Um, the age of things um, that we're using band-aids on to keep them going and uh, the general increase in inflation on uh, repairs and materials. Got it, thank you. Yep. Madam Chair, just go ahead, Paula. I have a question, a little follow-up to that. Um, for the rest of the fiscal year, Mike, do you foresee um, more repairs to take place? That's getting pretty close to your budget. Do you think you might have to dip into reserves? Um, I hope not. I don't have any wood here to knock on, but uh, um, we don't anticipate anything right now, so we hope we can make it through. Okay. Mike, how does yeah. our train contract impact all of the like repair and maintenance pieces of things? Um, Train went through the town buildings, but never proposed anything on the town buildings. Just oh. the, the school buildings. They're pro we're probably not big enough. Okay. For a benefit for them, and also where the town hall is about to be torn down and moved to a new building, and the COA right. move into a new building. There wasn't, other than really the police station. You know, there really wasn't anything. Right. I mean, I know that at the police station, they've had some HVAC issues recently, but I don't know. That's a big enough location for right. it to be impactful. Yeah. Any other questions on the municipal building budget? Hearing none, move on. That was it for budgets. Um, you have the draft warrant. Um, I don't know if you want to go over it or just review it. Um, I did have a question for you um, as far as maybe starting with the future meetings, we could handle like one or two of the articles at a time so you're not inundated. Um, we could start with the petitioned articles. Um, sure. And I'm just not sure if, is it okay with you if, uh, I know you'll be waiting on ones that involve the planning board for their recommendation before you take a vote, but is it okay if we have those people come and present anyways before you in advance? Yeah, it looks like there's some lengthy planning board changes in here as far yeah. as bylaw changes, lot dimension changes. So yeah, I think that getting those conversations started sooner rather than later is probably okay. a good idea. Yeah. And if it makes sense for us to schedule a joint meeting with the planning board, we certainly can, you know, switch one of our meetings to match up with one of their meetings. That is easier. Okay. And if someone else wants to run the IT, I mean, I'll even go meet with them in person. <laughs> they have their meetings. Oh, by the way, they have their meetings at the cable studio. Just wanted to let you know that. Oh, they do? They do. I'll burn some stage when I get there. It was an adventure, Mike. You got to say that. You did, a good, you did a good job, though. Did a good job taking notes of the meeting. Pretty sure Shane got a couple of my choice adult words on the video, but we'll just leave that where it is. Now, now you're making us all want to go back and check that video. <laughs> I'm sure there are words everyone's heard before. No big excitement there. 
Um, so I do not have minutes back from Rachel yet. So we will table that until we have them and reconvene. Mike, do you have anything else for us tonight? I do not. Anyone else have anything tonight? Madam Chair. Go ahead, Kevin. Yeah, um, I just had a question for Mike because um, someone brought it up today to me um, regarding the exhibits that we use for, for these meetings. Uh, the, for example, the budget exhibits that we just went through. Is there a way for us to post those um, uh, to like a Dropbox or something so that you know folks can not don't so that they don't have to attend the meeting to see those documents so that they could just get them? I think plan is, someone said planning board does something similar. Yeah, yeah, that'd be that's a good idea because um, you have members that probably weren't on through the whole process when we started. Yeah, let me let me right. do that. That's a good idea. That's awesome. awesome. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Oh. Madam Chair, I just have one thing. Sure. Um, if anyone, if anyone is interested, um, the athletic complex project is going out to bid um, on Thursday, Thursday at two p.m. Um, the subcommittee is meeting tomorrow evening, um, so I don't have too much information. I know Dr. Bayetta said that. We have to, I guess they have to cut it about 500,000 to meet the 6.3 million budget debt exclusion. Um, but it doesn't look like the project's going to be significantly changed to be able to meet that. Um, so I will find out more tomorrow. I'm going to attend the meeting. Awesome. Moving along. Excellent. Thanks, Paula. Welcome. Any other updates or questions? Paul, oh, what time is the subcommittee meeting? It is at 6.30 p.m. at the Norton Middle School Library. And is it going to be in person? It is. Yes. All right. Anything else? All right. Hearing nothing at 8.01, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. I have a motion from Kevin, a second from Joe. We will take a quick vote. Bill. Mm. Yes. Kevin Bouguet. Yes. Zach. Yes. Kevin Snyder. Yes. Joe Parker. Yes. Paula. Yes. I am a yes, so that is unanimous. Thank you all. Have a lovely evening. Good we'll night, everybody.